Okay, so I changed the master file a little bit. Yeah. I made it to into two sections. You can do uh, what is it called? Um, uh, rough cut okay. and fine cut. Yeah. So everything here, I just let's just make it clear. Everything here is for fine cut, and everything these two are obviously. Uh, the same uh, for both the geometry and the rotate stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, and these whatever you see here is inside this group is for um, our rough cut. Yeah. So as you can see, whatever is outside is the same for both. For mm -hmm. example, the general setting you can keep it same for both mm -hmm. approximation mm -hmm. stuff like that. And your geometry stay outside of the group because it's the same geometry you're gonna do. Yeah. So in the uh, okay, the rough cut I think uh, it was easy because it was just contouring and then we did uh, the thing uh, helix stuff mm -hmm. and uh, two rounds whatever. Uh, I choose uh, here you can have a different tool of course for the rough cut, and for the fine tool you can also have a different. I use here three diameter and stuff. Um, now the difference uh, here is that you choose uh, you don't choose from rough milling you choose from fine milling the okay. operation that you want you can do both in the uh, same time as uh, i will add more uh, operation at the, uh, as i design this but for yeah, now yeah, there is yeah. 2d contouring and 2.5d contouring which is this yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, so when you turn them on you get uh, here for example, I just make a panel so you can see what comes out of this. Uh, it basically says um, there are some operations here. Milling the exterior convex and vertical faces. This is a 2D contour uh, operation. And this is also 2D, but this one is uh, um, for the other object because we have two objects. Okay. And this two also uh, uh, for the two and a half, uh, where for the faces that are slanted, they're not vertical, so you have to do that. So automatically creates operation for you. In here, uh, what we have to do is to um, uh, basically divide them into two groups of 2D and 2D because they come all uh, out of this one. So I took the first one and the second one, which are the 2D, and the two and a half D was the second and third. Okay. Uh, four, sorry. So four. It's a bit from zero, you can say second and okay. two. So this is the operation you can change uh, for two D. This is same as above. Um, I what I did especially here. Uh, we can turn on the preview for this one, so you can see what's happening. This was uh, something like. This was some before I change it. Um, you can see how this was. I will just connect it directly so you can see the difference. And also, we have to remove the. I disable this. It doesn't. Uh, we can do that. Um, uh, disable. That's also we don't need. So. so uh, when it comes out of the automatic uh, component, it's like this. It doesn't okay. look that good because um, every single face uh, has got one contour, mm -hmm. and then that's it. Just, okay. um, so what I can do here in order to uh, simplify it, I change some setting. For example, um, in the links, I have uh, sorry here uh, when it comes to the leads, I have one option. Uh, no, sorry, you have to link them so it's in the link here. There is a short link by a distance. So if the distance between the two tool pads is less than uh, 16 millimeter, or you can adjust, mm -hmm. then they it creates one single move. For example, if I reduce this, you can see there is uh, every single uh, tool pad. Yeah. You can see, okay. but if I link them together. If they're uh, closer than uh, 
15 millimeter, for example, then I get one single nice line. This happens if they are parallel and also they're close to each other. So this one thing you can do to simplify uh, everything. And then the other thing is I add a little extension. So mm -hmm. this goes okay. a little bit out. Uh, so here, and then I in the strategy I chose uh, by layer. So this can in this upper layer can be uh, done before the lower layer starts. Mm -hmm. So this is what I change. Um, this also changed the to two, but you said you can do it one because it's already uh, it was not necessary actually. Sorry, so so I just make it one. So that's um that's ready so this this went there uh the second one is uh our two and half d so the two and half d operation is um uh, you can see i extend them this is the extension that you can do here again in the overlaps so by seven millimeter um, what else I did? I also select one option for the corner. It's in the strategy under the corners. The, we don't care about the outside corner. The inner corner, we can choose between uh, these three options. Uh, this one doesn't do anything. So it's very sharp. But you get the, still, you get the radius of the drill. This rounded, which we don't want. This one extend the tool bed on the side of the when it comes. Mm -hmm. So when it comes, it goes in, and it comes back. You can see already this is going in, and this is how much you can uh, extend it by percentage. Is the by, means by the diameter of the tool percentage of that. For example, if you're using the three uh, yeah, yeah. millimeter, so this would be almost a radius of the tool, yeah, okay. a little bit more than radius. You can also step, uh, specify a normal by millimeter. Yeah, right. If you choose this one, then it goes in the up, uh, perpendicular direction. So it goes this. This one, uh, I think this was what I did. So they're all into the side. You can also choose the 45, and you can see they're going 45 degrees. Mm -hmm. uh, here you can see that. Yeah, yeah. So that's make it like a round corner kind of thing uh, outside. Um, the the rest was normal. Everything should be done per object, uh, per face. So um, the rest is normal. Then it um, you can do uh, as you can see. Uh, you can do two uh, operation uh, into one here, mm -hmm. but from here to here should be always one uh, connection. Okay. Okay. So that's important.
one thing I didn't explain was how to set the speed and other stuff. Uh, I just disable this again. Uh, so there was uh, yeah. In order to create these comments, you need uh, of course you need an operation. You need your drill. The drill is also from here. You connect it to this. You also need some settings uh, as a general settings, which includes the the uh, feeds and the speeds. Uh, this is starts with uh, one uh, your uh, your spindles, which is uh, either you can define either in uh, one thousand revolution per minute or a meter per minute. Mm -hmm. This is for all the operation that you plug here. If you have operation with different speeds if there's some such a thing mm -hmm. then you need to copy okay. paste this and make another one because this uh, is uh, okay. will apply on all the operations. Then you have to put all together into exactly yeah. yeah uh then uh this uh the next thing which is very important is right now i actually put that as a, f a full speed mm -hmm. because this is exactly the maximum of the mm -hmm. of the tool um then here the work fit is the speed of the milling, which mm -hmm. uh, goes through the material and then mm -hmm. you can define it in millimeter per minute or mm -hmm. millimeter per revolution or uh, rotation. And this is the uh, rapid feed which moves um, your, uh, yeah, between the parts. So in actually they're all uh, color coded. The, the red is the rapid feed. The yellow is the engage and retract, mm -hmm. and if you can see any orange, we don't have an orange right now, but there would be next and return when the operation moves from uh, one operation to another mm -hmm. within the material or just above the material. Mm -hmm. So uh, typically, uh, uh, you have you can set everything uh, here. Uh, these two are in actual unit, the rest are just a percentage of the work fit. Um, so, uh, mm, yeah, we can do that here. Th this are also important for uh, when you have a very um, curvy object, mm -hmm. uh, that you need to break those curves into uh, arc and lines. Mm -hmm. You can also do a spline, the spline will convert, uh, will be exporting spline commands to cook uh, to the robot which is uh, then you know the loading process is different we don't want to do that so we just approximate with the single line and this will create a linear and circular motion we do, there is no spline motion here so if, even even if you have a very free form object you will not get a spline in the robot mm. you just get arc and line uh, so this this is the tolerance which has to be almost next to, uh, near the rhino tolerance and this is the minimum arc length or, uh, or segment length maximum segment length. So the maximum segment length would be here 94 and then 9 centimeter not more okay. than that mm -hmm. and stuff like that normally that the this is also angle threshold which is uh, just one degree mm -hmm. normally these things are um, they should work by default uh, if you have weird uh, thing, then you can come back and ch change them. And that another thing which uh, we have to look is the our um, data for the tool, which is the uh, uh, XYZ. This is by default uh, as per our robot. Uh -huh. um, the uh, the angles or okay. axis. This is the same number of which you can see right. uh, uh, here in the. Uh, no, sorry, uh, and the tool actually, but I think I delete that component. There was a tool here. Mm -hmm. The let's just show you in the picture, which is these are these numbers yeah, X, yeah. Y, Z, and A, B, C, mm -hmm. the, which uh, defines the location of the tool according to this flange mm -hmm. of robot. Mm -hmm. So I put them based on what uh, was there in the scope camp. Uh, uh, so um, that's there and that's all. Cool. So um, I think we can just test now one yeah, thing. Yeah, let's test.